A dangerous storm will be coming to the United States over the next few days, which will bring the threat for severe weather, including damaging winds, very large hail, and a few tornadoes. Additionally, a record-breaking heat wave will be impacting the country this weekend, with some areas feeling as warm as 115 degrees. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today, and we are coming off of a pretty big day of severe weather weather yesterday. Back along the East Coast, we had the remnants of our storm system that impacted the country on Wednesday, which brought a big severe weather outbreak to the Ohio Valley in the Midwest. We had a bunch of wind reports back over on the East Coast, over 500, believe it or not. So we actually had a pretty widespread wind damage event across areas in the Mid-Atlantic and back into the Northeast. That is finally moving out, but we got more severe weather on the horizon. We just had severe weather yesterday in the Northern Plains, and we are about to see another round of severe weather later today, where all hazards of severe weather will be on on the table, potentially even significant severe weather, including strong tornadoes. And just briefly recapping yesterday, we had over 590 wind reports across most of the East Coast and the Northeast. We had widespread wind damage back over in Maryland, and then we also had a couple of tornadoes, one of which was actually in Saskatchewan, Canada, and we also had another one back over in North Dakota, and we may have had another tornado also in South Dakota. So a couple tornadoes happened yesterday, and we are likely going to see at least a couple more tornadoes today, pending storm development here across the Northern Plains in the Midwest. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, and we'll begin with today, which is Friday, and we have an enhanced risk of severe weather in place from Montana back into northwestern Wisconsin, a slight risk also across the Northern Plains in the upper Midwest, marginal threat also from western Montana into northern Michigan, where all hazards of severe weather will be on the table today. This includes the risk for significant damaging winds. We could have damaging winds as high as 80 to 90 miles per hour later today after storms develop. This could turn into a Boeing segment of storms by this evening, and that could potentially produce the threat of numerous to widespread damaging winds, which could knock down trees and power lines. So make sure that you are ready to go when it comes to the potential for power outages. Very large hail is also a concern, especially out of our initial supercells, which we think the initial supercells will develop back over in North Dakota and eastern Montana. That should extend also back into Minnesota as we go into the evening hours. So very large hail is a concern. Make sure you are protecting your vehicle. On top of that, there is an elevated threat for tornadoes today. We actually have a 10% hatch tornado risk in place. This is the first time in a long time that we've actually had a outlined area for strong tornadoes issued by the Storm Prediction Center. That includes parts of central Minnesota all the way back into central North Dakota. So make sure that you have multiple ways to receive alerts and have a tornado action plan ready to go. We will be live later today, assuming that storms do fire off in this environment, which is not a guarantee, but they should develop. And if they do, we will be live. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified when we do go live. And then as we go into Saturday, the threat of severe weather will shift a little bit further to the north and east, where we have a slight risk of severe weather in place across the Great Lakes region and also back into the northeast, and a marginal threat extending from Montana back into New Hampshire, where all hazards of severe weather will again be on the table, including the threat of damaging winds, a little bit of large hail as well, and then the potential for a couple of tornadoes. The greatest threat for tornadoes, I think, will be across Michigan and also New York, so make sure that you have multiple ways to receive alerts in this area. And then on Sunday, our threat of severe weather will grow across the Great Plains, where we have a large slight risk of severe weather from Minnesota back into Nebraska, and a marginal threat that goes from Texas all the way back up into Canada, where again, all hazards of severe weather will be on the table, but the biggest concern for Sunday will be damaging winds and very large hail. There is a chance for a couple of tornadoes. Where those exactly happen, we do not yet know, but I do think there will at least be a low-end tornado potential across the board, pending that we have discrete supercells. There's also a marginal threat back over in the New England area, where damaging winds and hail be a possibility, but it should be fairly isolated. And then as we go into Monday and Tuesday, the threat of severe weather will likely continue in this general vicinity where all hazards will continue to be a possibility. And I do think our weather pattern is going to stay active even into the middle and end of next week, where there will likely be several days where we see severe weather that could even be significant. Now, today's tornado threat is expected to be very elevated. And the reason why is because we have an extremely favorable environment with very strong low level wind shear in place. This is what it's going to look like by around eight o'clock on our significant tornado parameter values which take a bunch of ingredients and basically show us how high our tornado threat weight may be. And these values are off the charts. I mean, we have a very favorable environment across the board for tornadoes. Here's the thing, though. We aren't really expecting storms to fire in this region around 8 o'clock. Instead, I think the majority of our convection will be back up into here in parts of North Dakota, also back into western Minnesota. Even then, the environment is still very favorable for tornadoes, so any storms that are able to be in this environment will be capable of the threat for strong, potentially even long-track tornadoes if we are able to get a discrete 
upgrade Super Cellar 2, which I still think is a possibility today. It is not a guarantee, though, because there will be some capping in place and there will be a lack of 700 millibar moisture. That could also lead to an issue here with our environment where we actually don't have storms fire off. So it is a bit conditional today, but if storms fire off, it could get very hectic very quickly. So here's the timing for severe weather today, beginning with around 3 to 4 o'clock this afternoon. That is when we're expecting storms to initially fire up back over in eastern Montana. These will be initially producing mainly a very large hail threat, but any storm that is able to stay discreet will be producing the threat of a strong or even significant tornado later today. Eventually, by around 9 to 10 o'clock tonight, these storms are going to spread eastward, and we'll also have a bunch of storms firing across northern and central Minnesota, and also eastern North Dakota, where very large hail, damaging winds, and an isolated tornado or two will be a possibility. One area we need to keep a very close eye on still is going to be back over here in South Dakota and also southwestern Minnesota. If for some reason a storm is able to fire here, we have a conditional environment here where a strong and even large tornado would be in place. We need to keep an eye on this area very closely, though the chances of storms firing down there are low, they are not zero. So just something to keep in mind. Eventually, by the overnight hours, we're going to start to see this area of storm activity start to congeal into multiple clusters of storms, which means our damaging wind threat will be very elevated, in addition to very large hail still being a threat, and that eventually by around 4 to 5 in the morning, most of Minnesota will be clearing out. But it is going to be a very active afternoon and evening here across the northern plains in the upper Midwest. Definitely make sure that you are staying weather aware. And then back over in the Midwest, we have some storms out there this morning that are falling apart. By later this evening, there will be storms here across Minnesota and also northern Wisconsin. Then this will congeal into a mesoscale convective system as we go into the overnight hours. Damaging winds and a low tornado risk will exist across the upper peninsula of Michigan and eventually moving into northern Michigan during the late morning. And then during the very late morning and early afternoon hours, those storms will move over to the northeast, which will lead to our next threat of severe weather. And one thing I do want to mention about our threat of severe weather on Saturday is that we are mainly expecting a large mesoscale convective system to bring damaging winds from the Midwest back into the northeast. But one other thing that could happen during the late afternoon and early evening is that we have a very favorable environment across the upper peninsula of Michigan and even across most of central and northern Michigan for tornadoes. But this is going to be contingent on the basically atmosphere destabilizing factors fast enough after this line of storms moves through and if it's able to destabilize fast enough we actually do have a conditional threat for all hazards of severe weather including the threat of even maybe a strong tornado but again this can be very conditional it's a very low confidence scenario as of right now but it is something we need to keep an eye on as we go into Saturday afternoon and evening so here's the timing for Saturday across the northeast we are expecting a line of storms to come out of Ontario as we go into the early afternoon hours mainly with a damaging wind threat there could also be an isolated tornado threat the HRRR also shows the potential Potential for a couple of supercells here to move here across Canada, which could lead also to large hail damaging winds and maybe even an isolated tornado or two across this region. So definitely stay weather aware. During the late afternoon and early evening, we may see another cluster of storms form, and that may also go into western and northern New York. So definitely stay weather aware. And then on top of that, the other area of storm activity that will move through during the late morning and early afternoon may still pose a low tornado risk and a low wind threat as this tracks across eastern New York and into very far western New England during the early evening hours. So overall, we are expecting a good amount of storms here, even in the Northeast on Saturday. And then as we go into Sunday, the threat of severe weather will shift back to the Central and Northern Plains, where we are expecting at least a few supercells to fire off during the late afternoon and early evening. Right now, the Rufus model is showing at least a few isolated to widely scattered storms here from the Texas Panhandle, all the way back up into Northern Nebraska. The main concern with any storms in this corridor should be large hail and damaging winds. May even see a few storms back over in Southeastern New Mexico as well. I wouldn't anticipate that this will also continue into Monday with a very similar look, but we may see a slightly higher tornado threat down to the south. And then back over in the northern plains, I do think our tornado threat will be a little bit more elevated on Sunday, mainly back over in South Dakota, maybe even southwest Minnesota with any supercells that fire. But generally speaking, damaging winds and hail should be the main concern. And then as we go into the overnight hours, these storms will start to fall apart. So overall, it's going to be a pretty active next three days of severe weather. And then as we go into next week, it is going to continue to stay fairly active. So beyond Sunday of this week, we are expecting another severe weather event to take place on Monday. This one may be a little bit more significant than Sunday's severe weather event. I anticipate there will be at least some scattered severe storms from the Midwest back into the Central Plains, maybe also down into the High Plains with damaging winds, hail, and a couple of tornadoes being a possibility. On Tuesday, showers and thunderstorms will continue across a large chunk of the United States, but the main corridor of severe weather will likely once again be in the Central and Northern Plains, which is very typical here for the later half of June. And then by Wednesday, severe weather will likely continue again across the northern plains and this event should be pretty isolated to scattered on Wednesday and then by Thursday more severe weather will be possible but I think most of it will be isolated across most of the country 
And then by Friday and Saturday of next weekend, things become a lot more uncertain. But I do think we're going to continue to see a lot of troughing here across the Rockies, which should lead to a few more organized threats of severe weather. But for the most part, next week's severe weather events are not expected to be super organized other than probably Monday. I think Tuesday through Friday will be just kind of isolated to scattered storms in certain regions. There'll be more localized mesoscale days. We may start to see some subnoptic features by the end of June that could lead to some more significant and maybe robust threats of severe weather. And on top of the severe weather, we are expecting a record-breaking heat wave this weekend across the country, including the Great Plains and back into the Midwest and as well as the Northeast. Especially in the Midwest and the Northeast, we actually could see temperatures well into the 90s, maybe even some low 100s, which would break multiple daily records and even in some cases records for the month of June. As we go into late Monday and Tuesday, cold air is going to start to move across the Northern Plains, but unfortunately a ridge is going to continue to spin down in the Southeast, which should keep a lot of warm air still in place along the East Coast and also across the Northeast. And then by the end of next week, it looks like we're going to continue to see above average temperatures for a large chunk of the country. So these are the forecasted high temperatures for Saturday across the United States and back over Nebraska, South Dakota and Southwest Minnesota is where we will have a pocket of temperatures in the 100s and even in the 90s across many areas in the Midwest and the Great Lakes. Same thing with Monday. Monday looks like it's going to be very hot, especially along the East Coast, North Carolina, even back into Connecticut. We will have temperatures in the upper 90s and low 100s. Get ready for some very warm weather. It is going to be hot across the country for the next three to four days. These are all the, also the feel like temperatures for Sunday. And you'll notice that even areas like central Minnesota, southern Minnesota, like Minneapolis, could feel like 105 to 110 degrees. It is going to be scorching hot here. Make sure that you are, if you have any sort of respiratory issues, that you make sure that you are limiting outdoor time. It definitely could get pretty dangerous out there with how hot it'll be here over the weekend. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We'll likely be live later today, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon down below so you're notified with the latest updates and live streams.